Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little bit of a different video and I wanted to share this with you because I think it would really help you, especially if you've been looking to buy certain products. So you might want to know about these five products. Um, basically, things I wish I would have known about these products before I bought them. I love these products, but I wish I would have known some of these things before buying them. That way I would have applied them in advance or I mean decided on something similar to that. So I just want to share with you some tips about these five products so you don't have the same experience that I had. The first product I want to talk about is one of my all-time favorite products. Rust paste, patina paste from Finnabar is one of my all-time favorite products. I'm not joking, I love this so much. However, one of the things that a lot of people, including myself, noticed about this product how quickly it dries when i say it dries quickly it's an understatement i think one of the reasons why it dries so quickly and i'll show you what i mean is that it is so textured see it's hard as a rock and i'm just showing you the one that has dried up i have other ones that have not and this is so hard i can't do anything with it and unfortunately it cannot be revived but there are some there are some precautions that you can take in order to make sure that this doesn't happen. And this is one of the things that I wanted to show you. So the first thing, and this you should be technically doing with almost every single uh, acrylic based, water based medium, because they tend to dry faster than oil, obviously. So with the big containers, so for example, these also come in big containers, they don't dry up as quickly. Things like gel, even though I don't do anything to it, it doesn't dry up as quickly. Same with gesso and other things like that. But this one does, I think it's because it's so much more textured. I think textured things dry up quicker. So one of the big tips that I found really helps is to use saran wrap or like plastic wrap to seal everything after you use it or before you use it. Meaning as soon as you get the product, even if it's you haven't used it yet, you should open it up and seal it with something that will really seal all the, um, all the air from coming out. And why I say before you have even used it is because this product has shown that it dries up even during like transportation. I mean, not after the first time, but let's say you bought it and then you just want to save it for another time. Just make sure you seal it first. The other thing that you can do is spray a little bit of water before you seal it. So it keeps it moist. And then all you have to do is just close this. You can even wrap everything around or wrap the whole thing around the saran wrap all around it. I recommend this for many different products, especially in all the mediums, because it keeps them moist and prolongs their life. So wrapping saran wrap and a little bit of spray, even in your gesso, even in, even in the gel medium, so anything like that. Now, have I done this on all of them realistically? No, I haven't. I forget to do this, but if you are very meticulous about your products, then that's a great thing to do. And the thing that I want to show you is that you can still use this. Don't throw them out even if it's dry because you could spray this with water and literally use it. Just want to show you. We just color things in so it still works like this to stain things so it's not pure garbage it might not work as a paste because it's hard but the what the color in it the pigment still works so you can use this and i've used this dry to add some patina rust to a project so things like our journaling would work as well for it as or for anything that is that needs a thin coat so that's my first tip to do with these rust paste is to do these, I mean, there's three tips here and you can use all three of them. The second product that I wanted to talk about, which I also love, but I wish I would have known before I would have done certain things, is brushos. Brushos are powdered watercolors, very highly pigmented, kind of like, they were the original ones that came out with these powders. And then other people started doing that as well, like Ken Oliver Color Bursts and Cosmic Shimmers, 
pixie dust. There's lots of different kinds of this. Um, this is not the same as mica powder or perfect pearls. It is a pigment and not a mica, so it's a little bit different. But when I saw what they could do, I was so, so excited. So I bought, this is how they come. I bought the whole container. I think I bought like the 48 or 36, like a big container full of colors. And I'm only showing you a two here. And they come like this. But I have to tell you, these containers are just so difficult. I should have done my research in advance and I didn't. I ended up opening the lid, which I should have not done because this is powder and it goes everywhere. And it was really hard lid to actually open. And if I would have known in advance what to do, which is to poke it, and not only to poke it once, which I haven't done in this one, but to poke it three holes, like almost like a salt and pe pepper shaker, it would have been much easier because then I could just sprinkle it on things. So for example, I could sprinkle this, which works fine like that, and just spray the water and it creates the color. So some of them I still have like this because I never transferred everything. But what I decided to do before reading about this is to transfer them into something like this, which is like a, I bought these containers and basically I could just sprinkle the powder from this as well, which works amazingly. But I do love leaving things in their original container. But this is an idea as well. And then I labeled everything. I mean, I labeled it with my handwriting, but you could use a labeler for this. So one of the things that I feel is important to do is like just follow what other people kind of say about trends and how to use certain products. It helps a lot in the long run. And if I would have known this in advance, I would have done it. One of my most successful videos was done with brushes. It has the most amount of views, I guess, on my channel, which I'll link below. But what was funny about it is that I didn't use the brushes properly in the sense that I didn't poke these holes and sprinkle them. I had used them, I had opened them and then sprinkled them with a little spoon. It was like a big mess. And I got like a thousand comments from people saying how I should have used them. So if I would have done my research in advance, that would have really worked and it would have helped. So as I said, you poke this, you could even put a piece of tape here at the top or you could transfer it into something like this, but then they don't have the brand name on them. So it's up to you, but the point is that you should really investigate how to use products before actually starting to use them. And that was my mistake and I'm passing on the information. So that way, if you want to buy brush shows or any type, you know what to do. Another product that I wish I would have known this about is acrylic paints. I did a whole video about acrylic paints and I went dove into all the different things that you can do with them, the different types and everything. And you can watch that video. I will link it below. But what I wish I would have known is that the different containers make a difference on how quickly things dry. And also what not only the different containers, but also the type of acrylic paint that you have. So things that are a little bit thicker, obviously dry faster than more of the liquid ones. So I have things, things like liquid acrylics, they, even though they're in a smaller container, which usually smaller containers make things dry faster, is that the liquid acrylic didn't dry as fast because of it. I found that these type of containers, which are the tube ones, although they are not as convenient in terms of like, you know, spreading and pushing things out because then you can cannot put the acrylic paint back in the container. I found that these dry up let um dr don't dry up as fast as things like in this container in this container so i find that the containers that are like have the lids like what i showed you before with the uh, paste and stuff after a while they dry up you see it's supposed to be a liquid uh, not so liquid but it's supposed to be able to paint it and i'm sure there is something that you can add to this to make it um uh, make it be paint again but some things you just can't things like gel just cannot be revived i mean so it's unfortunate because I really love these colors. I love the Dilutions paints and I didn't realize they were going to dry. Otherwise, I would have done what I did with the other one is to put the Saran wrap. But I didn't think acrylic paint dries like that. I mean, it's been a few years. But for example, this one has always been a few years as well. And so is this one and it hasn't dried as much. Same with this one. The other one that has dried quickly as well, and I think it is because of this container and because air gets into through this area, is these dabbers. And... 
Yes, I've had these are the original things, so they're very, very old, but they dried up like very quickly, even after a year or so. So I just find that if I would have known that I would have maybe protected them better, but I didn't know that. Now I know to buy things in certain containers or protecting them with a saran wrap and that works as well. So those are tips that you should know, especially for acrylic paints, because there are so many different kinds and sometimes you don't know what to buy. So if you want to look at a really comprehensive video about acrylic paints, you can uh, press on the link that I showed before. But if not, I mean, this is just a little tip for you to know. The fourth product that I wish I knew something about before I bought is sprays. There's so many different types of sprays on the market. It's crazy. And I also made a video just specifically about sprays and you can, and I'm linking that one as well here. But the thing that I think it's important, there's a few tips that are really important with sprays and also to know what type of spray to buy. But that is a comprehensive thing that I don't want to get into in this video, but more just for the tips of what to do because a lot of people get very confused about not only what to buy, but how to use them. Okay, so if you want to know how to use them and tips and techniques on that, go watch my other video. But in terms of this, this is something that I wish I would have known. And that is how to shake and how what to do with certain sprays. So the difference between different sprays is that some of them are made with mica, like the Lindy's here, or the Prima ones. And some of them are made with pigment or with stains. So things like the Marabou ones or um, the one, the Distress Stains. And then there is these ones that are made with also with pigment, but they're, they're a different type of pigment, which is the, um, the Oxide Sprays. They're in a completely different category. And then you have the Dilutions that are also stains and pigment, so, or dye, sorry, they're dye sprays. So they're a little bit different. So what to do when it's pigmented, okay? One of the number ones, and you should do this with all of them, is never shake it up and down. Don't shake this way, but shake sideways when you're shaking them. Anything. Because what happens is that if you see all this pigment at the bottom, if you go and shake it up and down, what's going to happen is that that pigment, it's powdered, and it's going to clog the spout, and you won't be able to get it out. I have so many clogged sprays, and um, that is just beyond, like, comprehension. So one of the tips is to do that. And then what they say is that when you have this or any type of spray, always clean the spout right after you use it. Don't get me wrong. I do forget to do this a lot. But one of the things I know the Distress Oxide sprays have to be cleaned. Um, the spout has to be cleaned. And like you see, I didn't do this here. So what happens is that it gets clogged. You can also soak the spouts in like warm water and that should unclog them as well. But if you want to watch a comprehension, comprehensive uh, spray video about which spray to buy, you can go to my other video. I don't think Distress Oxide sprays were out when I made that video, so that's a different thing. But I've used this in other videos so you can see the difference. But it's really important to kind of know that sprays are like an amazing way to cover something really quickly. They kind of look like watercolors and you can use them on so many different surfaces and they just look amazing. So that's something that um, I wish I would have known because a lot of my things over the years clogged. So of course I've been doing the shaking sideways for many years already, but for those of you who don't know, that's a good tip to have in order to make sure that you don't get it clogged. The fifth and final product that I wish I would have known something about before buying it or choosing it is our journals. And truthfully, I have so many different types of art journals that is just crazy because I love art journaling so much. But if I would have thought of it, if I would have known in advance, if I would have had to buy only one, then, or one or two, because I can't just pick one, then there's a few things, a few factors that I would have like taken into consideration. And that's something that I want to share with you because that would have made a difference. Um, so just to show you all the many different kinds, there's moleskin journals, there is spiral journals, which are here. This is the Dilutions, Dilutions for a journal. And then there is um, a, the Joggles journal, which are like spiral bound. We have Dina Wakely's journals that has like different um, pages in it. So there's so many different kinds. And one of the things I wish I would have known 
is that bound journals okay bound journals especially because i love mixed media and i love things that are thick are not going to be the greatest for adding thick materials a lot of these journals are these this thin you see how thin it is like you know it doesn't even make sense because like i mean these are good if you look at some of um diane reevely's journals she doesn't use any 3d materials so it doesn't matter it fits perfectly here same with dina wakeley's and tim holtz and all the people but for me my type of art journaling that i love the most is the 3d one so it was really hard because this journal look what happened to it and turned into two journals and i always say that i was going to basically um hold on let me move this up i always say that i was going to bound this one because what i had to do is that i had to cut this journal because i had it was so thick this is how this one turned out so i had to cut it out of this one so it would fit into two journals so this one actually was where was it right here i think uh no this is the first page i had to cut it out of somewhere here i don't know maybe in the middle or something like that because it wasn't fitting it didn't fit it, like it literally looked like, like an accordion it was like this i didn't i couldn't even close it so i had to cut it it doesn't look like it's the same journal but trust me every single page here starting this was the beginning i couldn't do anything about it because i had to basically it was all thick and i couldn't i couldn't like get it inside so somebody said why don't you cut it and then make another cover for this but i've never done that but this is what i'm saying i love this journal i love the size of this journal i love the fact that i could um i could create so many amazing things but i found that the bound journals were much harder to use not only this delusions one i found it um i found even this one this is a mixed media strap more of one and again the same thing it became an accordion okay you see and look how many pages i haven't been able to use because of it there's a lot of pages that have become so thick that the end of i can't even i can't even use the end of the journal because it will it will literally open up like an accordion so that's the only thing that i wish the journals uh had like a little bit more space on the spine especially for people like that love mixed media that is not like 2d i love this that love the 3d that's why i love so much and this is why i've kind of shifted a lot towards the joggles uh disc bound journals like these ones because these ones you can add the pages and it never becomes an accordion because once you're done you can just you know start a new journal and you how you can buy more of these circles so you're never bound to not being able to fit it so that's why and i, I will link all these products sorry i forgot below especially these journals because i know a lot of people want to know so in terms of size the joggles discount journals come in so many different sizes but um i love that this one is a six by six and you can see that i did like a bunch of things really 3d things and it hasn't affected anything so that's why i love this so much and um the other one that i really like is the is this one it's more like a spiral bound so you can see this one is a prima marketing mixed media from finnabar so what i like about this one it's spiral bound so you can actually remove the pages as well it's a little bit harder than the the disc bound because you have to literally take it all off but you could work with this without having to muck it all up and um the nice thing about it is that let's say you use a lot of them which i haven't but if you use a lot of these pages you can actually take some of them out and it will not uh, affect everything else i guess with the other journals you could rip the pages out of it or like i did is cut it so i wish what i wish i would have known about these journals is that the bound ones are really hard to use for people that love 3d mixed media but for 2d mixed media they're amazing I don't regret anything that I've bought. I love everything so much and I'm really uh, happy to use all different kinds of journals. I don't always use the joggles, mix me, uh, disc bound journals because I do love to combine things. I've been addicted lately to the Dina Wakeley's, um, the one that I showed you with the, with the different textures on it. I am addicted to that one now. So I've been using this a lot, a lot too. And I just love 
going through my different journals so that's why and i like some of and oh, another thing that is important is the thickness of the page so i love that these are really thick most of the ones i've picked are really thick but some of them are not and that's not as great so for example the original journal i started with it's more like a sketchbook i've done really nice pages in here but it's actually really thin. It's more for like drawing. So I ended up leaving this one as a drawing sketchbook instead. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really tried to be concise and give as many tips as I can. I think talking about products and explaining what would have been good or I wish I would have known about certain products. This is a good video to help people when they want to purchase something. If there's any product that you think I might know about and you might want to know more about because if there's something that you might not be sure of, please feel free to leave a comment in my video here and I'll be able to respond. If I know something about the product, I will. If not, then I will try to find the answer or I'll direct you to where you should be able to find that answer. So thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.